Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. Our IoT device can now get data from the smartphone, get data from the web and be programmed over the air. In the next step, the user interface has to have fast reaction time. And I want that my thing can recover from a bad or blocked state without any human interaction. This is the goal of today's episode, to create such a user interface for a push button and to stabilize the device as much as possible. Everybody with Windows experience know how to repair an unresponsive or blocked computer. We hard boot Windows and usually the problem disappears. The same concept is used by small chips. If something really goes wrong, we reboot the chip. But of course, we cannot do this manually, like with Windows. We have to use an automated procedure to do it. A commonly used solution for this problem is called Watchdog. Watchdogs generally use interrupts. For those of you who do not know the concept of interrupts, all microcontrollers support this concept. It allows to interrupt your sketch without your knowledge. All Arduinos use this concept to update the millis and micros counter. You do not need to do something. These counters are always up to date. This is done by a timer in the microcontroller chip itself. And these timers run more or less independent from your sketch. This fact can be used to build such watchdogs. A watchdog is a simple timer which counts up every millisecond or every second. As soon as it reaches a predefined value, it automatically resets the microcontroller and it reboots from scratch. Exactly as with Windows. Here is the example sketch. We use a library called ticker. We initialize a ticker with the name second tick and attach the subroutine ISR watchdog. ISR stands for interrupt service routine. This name is used to show that this is not an ordinary subroutine. It will never be called by our sketch. These two lines of code make that the subroutine ISR watchdog is executed every second. And in this subroutine, we count our watchdog timer up. If it reaches 5, the ESP8266 is resetted by the command ESP.reset. If we start the sketch, we see the effect. Every 5 seconds, the watchdog bites and resets the ESP8266. But you might say now, this is not a very intelligent behavior, because it makes our thing very unstable, because it crashes every 5 seconds. But what would happen if we feed the watchdog before it bites? Let's try this. We set the watchdog count to zero in each loop. But before we can do that, we have to declare our variable a little bit different. If we want to write to a variable from our sketch and from our ISR routine, we have to declare our variable as volatile. These things said and done, we upload our example and start it. Now, Watchdog count never reaches 5 and the chip runs forever. This effect can be used to stabilize our sketches. Let's assume we feed our watchdog at the beginning of our loop. During normal operation, our loop will never use 5 seconds to execute. Only if something bad happens and our code is blocked somewhere, we do not come back to the place where we feed the watchdog. And after 5 seconds, it is really hungry enough and bites. And the ESP reboots 
and get again into a stable condition. This concept, of course, is not a protection against bad coding, but it is a protection against unforeseen effects. Just as with the newer versions of Windows, where we have to reboot only rarely. And this is exactly what we want for a device which has to operate without any professional interaction. By the way, the very same concept is used by the ESP8266 itself. All Wi-Fi traffic is handled in the background without our knowledge. If you block now these background works with your sketch, the watchdog in the ESP cannot be fed and resets the chip. Blocking the background jobs is very simple. You start the Wi-Fi and stay in this loop. Then the ESP crashes quite fast. Soft WDT reset means translated the watchdog bytes. If you insert the command yield, the ESP runs stable because this command invisibly gives the Wi-Fi in the background the chance to get its work done. And, of course, feed the watchdog before it bites. If you hard boot your Windows after a severe problem, usually you lose all your work. If this is not acceptable, and in my case it is not acceptable, you have to include a recovery routine in your code. I will not cover this topic on YouTube. Interested watchers, however, find the needed ideas in my code on GitHub. Now we go to the user interface. When you start programming Arduinos, one of the first commands you use is delay. This is a very handy command to slow down the chip if needed. Unfortunately, during the execution of the command delay, the chip is completely blocked. If you, for example, press a button during this time, the chip is not able to see it because it cannot read input signals during the delay. Therefore, delay is not used if your sketch has to be responsive. In this example, the sketch reacts slow to the pressing of a button and short presses are completely ignored. If we do not like this behavior, we have to use other methods. One possibility is to use while loops. You see here, we have the same functionality, but much better responsiveness of the push button. And no delay command is necessary. Another possibility is the usage of interrupts, like we used for our watchdog. In this example, the loop contains only the coding for the push button. The ISR completely takes care of the printing. Never print in an ISR routine, because printing takes a long time. ISR routines have to be very short and fast. I just did it here to keep the example simple and to the point. For the moment, this was the last video on the topic of Internet of Things with ESP8266. You find a link to the code in the comment. The next episode will be a short one. I will demonstrate how you can increase the flash size of your ESP01 modules to 4 MB. This is particularly important because with this memory size you can use upload via air and can keep the scarce GPIOs for your application. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye!